Good morning guys and welcome to the first part of our van build series. So at the end of 2021 we bought a Nissan Insys Star 2006 model. A big advantage of buying this van was that it was semi-converted already which meant it had a roof vent in it, the roof was all cladded and the walls were insulated in ply line so that kind of gave us a blank canvas to start. It does mean that we can't show you how to insulate and ply line and stuff because that's already been done. But anyway let's rewind to the end of 2021 and show you how the van build began. Welcome to Under the Van. So we've got these massive bolts that are uh, holding the double seat in the back of the van. So I managed to get the first one off. Somehow we need to get that out. So I've managed to get an adjustable spanner into this gap and it looks like the bolt's pulling up. Hopefully we get to cross the first thing off the list. Remove the double seat. So now we just want to lay some struts. We've got these two bits of wood. We need to have 15mm worth of slat, then we need to have the Reflectex bubble wrap, and then we need to have what looks like 9mm ply. So basically what we need to do is get one across this way, and then we need a bit across here, and then we need a little corner piece that'll be this piece here. So with two bed slats, we should have a nice foundation to put the plywood on. And then the fire, can't wait for that. But once we've got the floor in, we're gonna have to build the bulkhead up so that we've got something to support the tile to, to protect it from the heat and then we'll be building the kitchen back. It's exciting. I'm here to show you this, which is just a little air vent thing. Basically, when you've got a log burner, it obviously needs air to burn the wood properly. And if you don't have airflow into the van, because obviously the van's pretty much sealed because of all the rubber sealants around the doors and stuff. So you need something to let air in so that it can combust the fuel properly. So we're gonna cut a hole in the bottom uh, and then fit that. the seats that we took out on Gumtree and Facebook so get the satisfying thing of striking something off the list we cut the vent in the hole as you would have seen from the footage I didn't mean to say cut the vent in the hole cut a hole in the floor for the vent insulating the gap leaving a hole for the vent we've done that lay the wood which is looking excellent that's done that's another one off the list so now what we've got to do is lift this old flooring out and stick down our new stuff That's what I call a blank canvas. So next, we've got to get this one in. So we're using carpet adhesive, which is not the strongest adhesive. It's probably not the best thing to use, but we've got loads of it. So it's what we're using. Um, we found that if you just spray the wood, the vinyl doesn't stick to it at all. You have to spray the wood and spray the vinyl, let them go a little bit tacky and then fold it over and then it sticks. So. So we're just gonna lay this over the vent thing and pop it in and then trim around. We decided not to glue it because we might have to replace this netting now and then if it gets like minging it or dead midges or whatever, so. Good morning guys. So it's proven kind of difficult to do this in the winter. Not only is it freezing, which is horrible on the hands, but also we just got such limited daylight. And then of course it rains most of the time because we're in Scotland. We did get a bit done yesterday, um, but we had to do it after dark because it rained most of the day. But we'll show you what we got up to yesterday anyway. Got these three struts in, and then a cross member or two. And basically, the way this is gonna work is this is gonna be the log burner space. These two beams are what the log burner's gonna be bolted to, but there's gonna be a tile on top, like that one there. Uh, there's gonna be a tile here, there's gonna be a tile here, which will need to be cut down because obviously it comes out to like here. Not looking forward to that at all. But yeah, basically that's the structure for the log burner. It's all really, really strong. It doesn't move at all. And then this is the corner, the first corner of the kitchen cabinet, something like that. And then here with sink, here will be another bit of kitchen cabinet. And there's gonna be a bench along here and then the bed. Uh, today's mission is probably gonna be to plywood off the back space here, probably the back space here. We're gonna leave a little window here just to be able to reach through and punch anyone that's trying to steal the van while we're in the back. 
I don't think we're going to be able to climb through it. At least we'll have some sort of latch to reach through. So I'm going to need a support here for this little window. So I'll be putting that in. And we'll just see how we get on. Obviously, we're just working with scrap wood. Like, there's loads in the shed as well. But it's tricky to find the right bit. You're always picking up a piece of wood, like I was last night. Really hoping it was going to fit. And then you find it's short by like four mils. So then you have to cut a completely different piece of wood to make it reach. But... That's what it is to upcycle wood, I suppose. So out of all the scrap plywood we've got, I'm managing to kind of build partition between the front of the van and the back of the van, as you can see. And then what I've done is I've cut a giant square of this four-way carpet stuff. We've got burgundy, because we got that for our last van and we loved it. So what I'm doing is, because of the chairs, I really don't want to have to pull these out in order to get behind this. So as I'm laying each piece of plywood, I'm reaching over, spray gluing it all, and then rolling the carpet up the back. It's looking quite neat. I can get in quite well from the driver's side, so I'm working from this edge over because then I can clean up any errors over there and I've left lots of excess. It should look really nice from inside the cab. It's going to provide a little bit of insulation. So I'll keep going with that and I'll update you when I've finished that, I reckon. So bear in mind we're working with scrap wood for as much of the build as we possibly can. So it's in like seven or eight different pieces. And I even had to, there was a hole in here. So I cut a little disc and then glued and sanded that in. But it's looking pretty good. I spoke to my friend Brett about cutting holes in a tile to put these legs through and he said just don't bother. It's just gonna be a nightmare and you're probably gonna break the tile. So instead I've got some 12 mil ply I think that is and I'm just gonna sit this under that tile, just drill holes in the tile and bolt through into the supports for log burning the legs. So hopefully today I'm gonna get them on, I'm gonna get this tile drilled and on and the log burner position. I can't wait to see these tiles in. They're so cool. They're like seven quid each, but then you have to pay like 17 pound in delivery because they weigh so much, but they're stunning. So we've got a plan. You'll know that, <laughs> I'm trying to point with an egg butty. It's a terrible pointing device, but you'll know that we lifted up the old floor, which is this kind of darker stuff. We've got big sheets of that in the shed. And uh, we're going to use that to do this back. <laughs> I can't put it down, everyone's so dusty. But we're going to, um, be putting vinyl on this back wall, but <laughs> let me eat my body and I'll come back. This is the air intake that we showed you for the log burner. I built this to go over it. Because this is going to be the log store, we don't want logs going on top of that. So I've basically built a little enclosure to keep it safe. And then I've just cut these triangle wedges out so that the airflow still comes through. But I've put wood on top so that we can stack the logs all the way up to the top of this space. And then I've just done some L brackets the back, which I'm just going to screw into this back wall. It doesn't need to be rock solid, all we're going to do is pile the logs on it. So I've had the log burner on and marked where its feet are going to go. So all I'm going to do is drill a hole big enough for this bolt to go through. I've got these nice long bolts that are going to go through the feet and then out through the bottom of these. So yeah, I'm just going to drill a pilot hole and then a nice wide hole to let this bolt through. Building a van in Scotland in the winter is such a bad idea. It's raining outside and we haven't installed any lights. There's no lights in the roof. So I'm having to work with a little button light. But all I'm doing now is checking that these uh, pilot holes are lining up with the legs. So I've successfully made uh, a hole in the first tile. It does chip the enamel, but that's totally acceptable because the foot is like an inch square. So that's going to completely cover that, but I need to make a bigger hole than that anyway. You're supposed to drill tiles from the other side to minimize the chipping, but because I've got such a small drill bit here, I thought I might as well just punch pilot holes in and all these bits. And I'll show you the drill bit. So it's made for glass and tiles and stuff. It's like a little blade on the end of it. And what I did was just put a dollop of olive oil on where I'm going to drill and then drilled through it and that's helped stop this from overheating. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a dollop of oil on that, really slowly bore through this. I'm going to do all four of them. Once that's done I can take a bigger one of these. I've got a 10 mil one here and I'll bore through from the other side to make enough room for the bolt to go through. I'm just stopping now and then and then pushing oil in because the drill pulls it out. So I just fill that in again and we'll go again. One, two, three, four. The first one is the worst looking one. As I went along, they seem to get better and better. The key is really in the pitch. When you're drilling, all of a sudden you'll just get a really high pitched squeak and that means you're like touching this enamel stuff or whatever it's called. 
So yeah, that's when you want to let off the pressure and keep the speed nice and high. And that ends up with a finish like that, which, you know, that's perfect. Anyway, I'm going to go through this now with the 10 mil. I'm going to come through this side, so that means you should put a bit of tape on to help reduce the amount of chip in, and then again, oil or water to keep the drill bit cool. So I'm going to punch through those four, and then hopefully that's that. We can get it bolted through with the log burner in position, which will be really exciting. Well, that didn't stick at all. So the tape didn't stick, but we're going to have inch wide feet that cover these bits. We've got so much room for error that um, we're just going to wing it. And hopefully this doesn't chip like crazy when I start spinning this 10 mil bit. Should we do the leg at the back first? Because it'll be the least obvious. Let's start really slow. It actually made it look better than it did because <laughs> we've got a better finish going on now. So I think we're just going to go without the tape and see what we get on. Four holes. And they come out under here. So yeah, we've got this fire sealant, 1200 Celsius. There's no way these feet are going to get to that temperature. Uh, but it's just what we've got and we're just using it to dampen vibrations a little bit. So we're just going to pipe a bit of this on. We're not looking to have loads of it. Kind of squidged it around a little bit to spread it on the feet. He's going to look stunning. It's a great wee stove. I think it was 330 quid without the flu kit. But yeah, we wanted one with glass. We could have got cheaper, but we want to be able to see the fire. Really happy with that. It looks like it's in the middle. I measured it about a million times. Don't go off that as reference because that's not the middle. But yeah, it's gonna look excellent. We're gonna bolt this down and probably call it a night. I guess like after a week or something, we'll just check and make sure those nuts aren't coming loose. Just with the amount of vibrations in vans, you know, but I don't wanna put Loctite or anything on it in case we need to get log burner off. So at this point of the build, we had the bulkhead in, some of the structure for the kitchen, and that first tile and the log burner all bolted in. It's also worth mentioning that we use porcelain tiles. They can withstand really high temperatures and they're also really cheap. So those tiles were about seven pound each. Whereas if we had bought sheet metal, which a lot of people do, it would have cost well over hundred pounds to cover the same amount of areas. So it worked out a lot cheaper and you get to choose from loads of different styles. Also with these tiles being so big, I think they were 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters. It meant we didn't have to do any grouting, which saved a lot of time as well. So join me in the next one where I'll be finishing off the fireplace and starting the bench. So yeah, tune in next week, guys. Thank you so much for watching.